fed the burger. <laughs> and you're watching Eclectic Arts. Mm. Love that stuff. Love it. Yeah. Big fan. Kind of sinking my teeth into the story of things. You just need sitting and and just, crying. And, uh, yeah, sitting and crying. Oh, how we do it. Alice, thank you again for yeah. Connecting, yeah. connecting us. And exactly, you hit the nail on the head. You attract like attracts yeah, like. I looked at some of your your previous uh, interviews and really exceptional. I'm really, I'm happy to be a part of, of the legacy you're building with uh, Eclectic Arts. Same. I want to be in their presence, so I conduct my life in a way that I hope that they want to be in my presence as well. This is so fucked up. You the dog walker? Stop looking at me like that. Yeah. You want to come in? No. You sure? I'm, I'm good out here. This isn't funny. Um, the leashes are inside. Are you making fun of me? I'll get them. Sure you don't want to come in? Stand up straight, asshole. This isn't funny. Okay, I got him. I should leave right now. I don't need the money. Just go, Kristen. Just fucking get out of here. Is Bitsy out here? My other dog. She's right there. Um, can I... Okay. Yeah, I have other dogs. Do Come want... on. Do you want me to go with you? No. Come on, let's go. You sure? Come on. Good afternoon, good evening, good morning, wherever you are in the world. I'm Mark Sugiyama from Eclectic Arts based here in Seattle, Washington. And thank you so much for taking the time to join me on this Saturday, the 3rd of September, 2022. And uh, a few housekeeping details that I'd like to go through. First, I'd like to thank uh, Matilda Lindell for joining me this morning um, from the wonderful ABBA tribute band, ABBA the Concert. And she was great, such a positive energy and role model. And um, being someone who's uh, super talented as a voice coach and everything she does on stage. And I'm hoping to see her in a couple of weeks here locally again, um, if I can kind of make things work out in my favor. So Matilda, thank you so much. And uh, I want to thank all of her fans as well for joining in the chat. That was really great. And uh, for those that are watching uh, this broadcast right now, if you would like to ask my guests a question, please feel free to join uh, by doing so by, I can't even speak right now, <laughs> by joining my YouTube channel, uh, if you subscribe and hit the notification bell, but if you subscribe, that will definitely give you access to the chat where you can ask a question. Um, please be aware that I'm the one that sees those questions, so I will fold those into the interview as we go along. Um, that seems to be working out really well for the past couple of months when I do it like that, instead of just having it being seen on everyone's screens. And uh, also, coming up for this, my next live stream will be on Wednesday the 7th at 6 p.m. Pacific. If you'd like to know who that is, please follow me as Eclectic Arts Media with one word on Instagram. That's where I post everything first, and some of that information migrates over to other social media platforms. I can tell you that this guest has been somebody that um, we've had a few hiccups trying to get things together um, a couple times, so I'm hoping that through, you know, third time's a charm that things will uh, work out schedule-wise and we won't have any kind of emergencies pop up, and um, well, I'm looking forward to talking to this guest. And uh, as I already mentioned, if you could subscribe to my YouTube channel, um, that's a great help. And if you're also over on, ah, I'm just marble mouth right now. If you're also over on the Twitch side of things, if you could follow me there, that's where I started all of this virtual work uh, a little over two years ago. So I would always maintain a presence on Twitch. And I want to thank a few people, which I neglected to do during the last live stream. I've had a few PayPal donations. There's a PayPal me link in all of my YouTube descriptions. And this service that I use costs me money, uh, point blank. And so, any kind of dollar amount helps me offset that, offset some of the other things that I have, like in my background and uh, equipment that I use. 
And so, and full transparency, I haven't had a donation in a few months. <laughs> so when something came through during the week, I was really surprised, but very, very grateful. So I want to thank uh, that person who actually donated twice. And then I just got a donation today after the uh, Matilda interview. So one of her fans was kind enough to make a donation. So only if you're in a, fish, a position to do so, I completely understand if you're not, but that's greatly appreciated. And so I am always excited when I get to talk to uh, people in the film industry because I have no background whatsoever in film. Most people know that I have background as a musician, photographer, writer, that kind of thing. Um, but when it comes to film, I'm just a fan that I'm starting to low, starting to learn more and more as I talk to these wonderful guests and uh, review films and things of that nature. So I'm really excited that uh, I get to talk to both of them. So let's uh, get going with this. My guests today are two talented filmmakers. They wrote, directed, and star in the film Straighten Up and Fly Right. I just show a little clip from uh, from the film. Please welcome to the Eclectic Arts Virtual Studio, Kristen Abate and Stephen Tannenbaum. I'll bring them in one at a time here. Hey, hi. Hey, hi. Hi. <laughs> Thank you so much Thanks for taking so the time today. I really appreciate it. Thank you, Mark. Thank you for having us. Yeah, again, yeah, uh, yeah. I, 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 truly I truly love having love filmmakers, filmmakers and people, and people that can explain, that can explain the, the, their art and process. process. So, so I, I want to kind of dive into everything. Into everything. Um, and, um, so and so I think the first think thing, the thing for me, and I'll try not to spoil the film for people, but let's see here. Yeah, Stephen, is there any way you can turn down your volume just a little bit more? And we'll kind of see because I'm hearing myself a lot through this. How's that? Let's see. Test, testing, testing. It's, it's better. How's that? Let's see. <laughs> we'll be able to hear you start our interview. <laughs> I, let's see. Check, check. That's better for me. Okay. It's, Kristen, is it okay for you? I think, or? So, I think so. I don't know. I think this is okay. How's how's this? Yeah, I mean, I, I hear myself still, but it's, myself it's off in the background. The background but, and I, I, yeah. if Kristen's okay, then we'll kind of roll from there. Okay, let's do it. Okay. okay. Um, in doing some of the, some of the research, research, and again, I'm trying not to spoil this too much, but, too much, but uh, both of you have a very have long a very history long together. History together. Um, as a mentor, uh, as, a mentor, um, as, um, as friends. friends, and so, and so please give me the timeline of the when, you started, when you started working on this, on this film, specifically, specifically like, the script, like the script, and then when you decided that the both of you would work together, writing, directing, starring, starring, what was this timeline, what was this timeline like? like? Well, I can well, say, I that say that. She tells this story better than I do. <laughs> The, the timeline, you know, I think unintentional has been the sort of 20 year span of our friendship, mentorship, relationship. Um, She's the mentor, though. I'm, I'm, I'm the student. Without realizing that we were going to embark on this journey together to create something that would tell our story, that would tell a story, that would be this sort of onion, sort of onion multi layered level. Um, chronic, chronic heavy story, story of, of how we kind of kind of found each, and found each other. Um, and so, uh, so the literal timeline of how we made the film took us six took years, six years which, which is a really long time long for time anything. For anything. Um, and that was, and you that know, was, we were partly impacted by the pandemic. By the pandemic. But mostly but because mostly we chose to make a film where we were working with working other talented other people, talented people who are cinematographer, cinematographer um, sound person, person, and also and camera person, who all became producers in the producer film as well, wow. who have a very busy lives. Life. In order to all work together, work together. we devised a strategy of filming one weekend, one weekend a, month, a month and sort of alternating that every other month. Other month. Jobs, we had to jobs, switch, had to move, switch it move it a little bit further out. And so, so that was that that like a lot longer than we anticipated. <laughs> Something else too. And well, yeah, and, well, then just yeah, that's, that's the first that's layer of that. Layer that. Um, Stephen is a loop to his own health, health, health issues health that during, during the course of filming, he had a stroke, a heart attack, and a broken neck three separate, separate times. times. So we so had time to 
you know, Stephen had a school, he needed to heal, and three very big life events that he had to recover from in an intense way each time. So the project, of course, you know, we were leaving it open so that we could wait and let him feel and come back to the film. And also Stephen coming back to the film, having major trauma and reapproaching that the work in a, in a different, is my sound really? Um, so based on what I thought I heard Kristen say, and again, there was so much reverb. Right. You had some life traumas happen during that six year period? Um, we were about um, half, three quarters done with the filmmaking. And first I had a stroke. So that put a, you know, I couldn't even talk. So that was about a six month recovery. I had to like basically start from scratch. And then um, right after, about a week after I got out of the hospital, I fell and broke my neck. Oh my gosh. Yeah. And then when I finally healed from that, I had a heart attack. So that put a crimp. How how we ever finished this film, I do not know. I don't know. I don't even remember that time period, quite frankly. Um, my brain didn't retain it too well. Um, Somehow, somehow, you know, um, two years later, turned to like five years later, and we managed to get funding from the New York uh, uh, Women Film something or other, finishing money for the film, and we were able to finish the film. We wouldn't have been able to had we not uh, received that money. And then, um, I guess, to make a put a tie a bow on this story to make it have a nice ending, um, like maybe almost as soon as we finished Slam Dance, uh, chose our film to be you know in their festival, and from that we've gotten into many many festivals. Wow. Um, I'm so sorry that, that all that happened to you. Um, it's okay. It's so jumbled in my brain. I, it's like it's almost another person. Well, and, and how, may I, how are you now? I'm fine. And, um, you know, I don't know. I just, uh, a lot of physical things have happened to me in my life. I had a pre exist, obviously, a pre existing condition. And I suppose if I'd been an able-bodied person, you know, one of these things could have really screwed me up. But it's like, I'm so used to having something going on that I just think in my mind, that, you know, you're supposed to continue no matter what. So that's always my attitude. And so far, so good. Okay. Oh, somebody. Hello. <laughs> Hello. Sound better? Yeah. Not for me. Not for me. <laughs> <laughs> That's so crazy. Yeah, it's like crackling. Yeah, it's like crackling. And Are you sure it's not, you know, uh, being in Vermont? I don't think so. I don't think so. Yeah, and I, I still hear that, that yeah, echo a little, a little bit. bit. Um, that was on the, the, the first device. Um, uh, I don't know. All right, why not, Stephen? I think right, you got this. this. <laughs> I think Stephen's Stephen's your guy. <laughs> okay. Um, I believe in you. As long as you don't mind, like sign language from time to time, I'm good. I'll just say I'm, I'll be here I'll in be support. Here in support. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Yeah, no, Stephen was kind of catching me up on what you had said about what had happened um, during the course of making this film. 
and like you were saying, it's just kind of a miracle that that it got made, um, and all these kind of things had to happen. But also, his his own personal adversity just kind of got him into a mindset of like he's used to having to kind of overcome things. Um, and I, I think it's kind of like we were talking pre-show. Um, there seems to be an aspect of this film that if you feel like you've been bullied, you don't belong, can't find your tribe, anything of the above you'll relate to it in some way. Um, right. And uh, was that something that organically people are getting from the film, or is that something that you're intentionally trying to get across? Well, I, I think that would be something we were trying to get across because I think one of the, the major um, threads of the film is finding, as you said, your own tribe. And, you know, if, if you don't have a family, you know, you make one. That's your only choice. And I think that's what ultimately this film is about. You know, you, you, you know, in art, in anything, you know, you find, you know, you find people with the same point of, you know, with similar points of view and, you know, you band together. What else yeah. are you supposed to do? You know, no, that's very true. You, you kind of find people, and sometimes you find like you're like you're the only one out there who thinks this way or is going through these experiences. Then you find out, no, you just have to find those people. There's other people out there just like you. Right. I mean, I think that's why, you know, this films. I don't mean just our film, but you know, you know, we we, we you know we're luckily in a period where more and more people's voices are being included in the hall, you know? And so it's very important, you know, for disabled people to keep seeing, um, you know, things that are like them because prior to this period, there were none, you know, um, growing up, I didn't have any role models, you know, and uh, it, it didn't even seem like a possibility that somebody would speak to me about my situation. You know, it could also be universal to others, but, you know, you know, up until now, I've spent my time trying to parse other people's situations and figuring out what to take from it that I could apply to myself and not, you know, seeing anything that directly dealed with my situation. Now we're finally getting, you know, uh, images and stories of people with all kinds of situations, you know? I, I mean, this has nothing to do with us in a way, but I just like, you know, last month I watched on whatever, Netflix or something, uh, uh, you know, the millionth iteration of uh, the Predators movie, but it was from a Native American, you know, point of view. And that's like fantastic. You know, I mean, it would be nice if it was just a matter of a course, but we're not there yet. But, you know, that's an amazing thing. And, it may, and not to say that it also doesn't revitalize a story that's been beaten to death. Because, you know, up until then, they're, you know, doing the same thing. And all of a sudden, they inject it with all this brand new stuff. And then you almost get a whole new story. Yeah, no, that's, that's yeah, really you know, I, uh, it's, you know, I mean, you know, this particular movie is about disabled people, but everybody's story counts and everybody, you know, needs a voice and, you know, whoever gets a voice, you know, it helps take everybody with them. Every new voice adds another voice and then another voice. And then, you know, and then it's not such a big deal. You know, you don't need to have a category in the festival, you know, crippled people, you know, best crippled film, you know, you don't need that anymore. I'll take it now, you know, because that's how I get my recognition. But, you know, Hopefully five years from now, that's, you know, that's silly. 
Yeah, no, it's a very good point. Um, for myself, growing up out here, I grew up in a suburb that was 99% Caucasian. So right. being Asian, I had a real identity issue with my own ethnic background because I wasn't around it. Right. And, my, and my role models were people that did martial arts, um, someone that was a servant. Uh, I never saw anyone in a position of power um, or something that was positive. It was right. just all these stereotypes. So even in, a, in that sense, like you're saying, once these voices and stories get told by the actual voices, it just starts kind of snowballing that you get these other voices and these other stories. And then they can start to kind of actually kind of crisscross and come together too at times. And like you said, like with the Predator um, film, Prey, that's out right now, there, there's a whole new spin on it now because they injected it with something that they just haven't been thinking about for right. decades. At all. Yeah. Um, and uh, I think one thing that's interesting, and we we're, and we're trying to get through this at the beginning before all the audio stuff was happening, was that um, I know, at least for the local theater around here, they've been really, really uh, specific about casting people that are the role of the character. So if you have a disability, then someone who has a disability tries to play the character, or if you're Asian or if you're Japanese or whatever. Um, and to me, especially knowing the background between the two of you, there couldn't have been anybody else that played Kristen's role in the film. I mean, it just wouldn't make any sense. No, because, you know, it's something I thought a lot about beforehand. And really, you know, the story is half about, you know, generic phys physical disability, but the other half is our personal story. So why would I, we get a complete stranger you know, to play off his our, our personal story. That didn't make sense. I mean, it's not like, you know, first of all, Kristen is an actor. So it's not like we had to make that part up. And uh, and I think, you know, if you need that authenticity, I think, thankfully, you know, I fit that bill. You know, I, I, um, I can vouch. I have my papers. You know, uh, my doctor will vouch for me. Yeah, so um, um, I, I think part of it, too, is that how much, so Kristen was there, and for folks that are joining us right now, we're having some audio issues, so Kristen's there in spirit, that's why she's on camera, but she's not um, chiming in, I'll try to figure it's out, maybe spirit. like, it's not actually her, <laughs> I'll try to figure out maybe like a follow up thing that I can do with her separately down the road or something, because I do want to hear from her, uh, but um, how did you figure out like how much of your own personal story to put into this film? Because there's such a history there. How did you figure out like when it's too much or how do you find that balance between the story that you're trying to tell and also, yeah, your own personal uh, relationship? Well, you know, I think, you know, in the beginning, you don't censor anything, you know, when you're creating it. And then, then you, you know, then you find out, oh, this is, this is more the story we're going to tell. And you take away all the you know stuff that gets in the way of that story. So you know you know in the end it's a mishmash of factual stuff, bullshit stuff, and uh, you know and and so you know it it goes through all these iterations, and you know it, by that point, you know you're not really thinking oh this part is true this part is not you know it, 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 it's it's the story is more important okay no that's it good for the story not you know not did it actually happen you okay know, that, 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 that makes it could sense. actually not have happened but be better for a story you know okay and um was there ever a point where you're thinking about not using your name as the characters well I don't know about Kristen. Kristen, you know, is an actress, but I'm not an actor. I mean, I don't pretend I'm whatever I am. I don't know what I am. Um, and uh, I like using my name. I don't say, oh, it's going to mess me up, make me think of, uh, you know, not think of the character or whatever. You know, I don't have those, um, you know, those uh, method, pro you know, quandaries and, uh, and, I, and quite frankly, I, maybe Kristen can give us uh, 
uh, uh, physical gesture here, but I don't think that bothered her either. Yeah, I, I don't think so. I think, you know, we, irrespective of everything else, we have a connection. So we were just talking to ourselves in the movie, you know, and, you know, I never thought like, this is my character talking to her character. I felt the same way talking to her when the camera was rolling and when the camera wasn't rolling. You know, okay. I don't know, you know, like I, I'm, not, I'm not starting an acting school right now. So I, I don't know I'm not how legitimate, you know, uh, the way of doing things that is. But for me, it helped. Well, and I would say, I would say that, that um, having uh, seen your having film seen twice, twice, you are an actor. You are an actor. Um, I, and I understand you're being self-deprecating, but you are an actor. Um, and then two, that um, I interviewed, no, it's not on my wall. I interviewed a, a television show actor, and his character is the same as his actual name. And I said, was that just a fluke, or how did that happen? And it turned out one of the actors who knew him pretty well, one day when they were rehearsing, just kept calling him his actual name instead of a character name. So the director was like, oh, why don't we just go with that then? So that's how it happened. It was just completely an accident. <laughs> right. So I didn't know yeah, if something I mean, with that with your guys. The only, the only problem with that is you, you, you probably can't have your name for every role. At some point, you have to have another name. So, yeah, enough. so hopefully, so hopefully, um, Kristen will have many roles, and uh, so far, this 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 is my my role so far. Well, I I think the film is fascinating, it's fascinating and, um, and um, it's, been, it's been as we've talked about, about, it was at the Seattle International, International Film Festival, 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 uh, Nashville, and uh, then there's like Virginia, and then after that, my brain is sleeping. <laughs> I don't, I don't know, I don't know. After that, I don't know. Kristen probably does, but I don't. Okay, well, there are some the European stuff. ones that were still in contention, so we just keep our fingers crossed. Okay, well, that says a lot. Oh, also, we're at or just finished the festival in Finland. Okay, that's well, congratulations. That's amazing because when I think about it, when I mentioned that I played three film festivals that I covered, I think I've only had that, I've had a film in Venom 2, not three of them. And so clearly you guys have many other festivals, so it's resonating with, with the crowd. They want yeah, the film. We're very happy, you know, with the audience reaction. You know, we, you know, fortunate to be in audiences, you know, at the festivals, and um, you know, a lot of people take it personally, whether they're um, uh, disabled or not. You know, they obviously, you know, the thing about disability is there's something very true about it is, you know, many people at some point in their life are going to be disabled. And if they're not disabled, they're certainly going to be very close to somebody who is. So, you know, that's a very, uh, you know, large spectrum to be able to, to, uh, to, to touch, you know, and we, we, um, you know, so many, that's why I feel like so many people can take this personally. And then there's the whole emotional side that we were talking about before, you know, people, you know, feeling, you know, outside of the mainstream and all that stuff. That's everybody, you know. So I, I really, you know, although, you know, we have a, a shall you say, a specialized appeal to a, you know, certain people, I really don't like to think of our film as, you know, for a small segment, 
you know, I, I mean, uh, uh, I mean, uh, the only film, the only people who, you know, maybe this film isn't geared towards is, you know, the king and queen of the prom. Other than that, I don't know anybody who doesn't relate to this film. Yeah, no, it's yeah, no, very, very good point. And like, yeah, we talked about before that for folks out there that haven't had a chance to see this, this is going to be at a, a festival near you or if it's going to be virtually if you have access to it, then that's another great way to watch it. Um, hopefully you guys find distribution so that it can come out through your streaming service or, or I love physical copies of like DVDs and Blu-rays and all that. Um, but there's a lot there's a lot of momentum behind this film and, and rightfully so. Yeah. Well, we hope it continues. Um, and just, and so I know Kristen's here. Again, for people that are joining us now, they're like, what's going on with that? Um, I'm, it's I'm not a film about deaf people. I'm hoping that I can um, have Kristen back, maybe solo or something, or try to do something. Uh, I'll talk you offline and try to get you back on, because I do want to hear your side of everything as well. Um, but um, Stephen, in your case, what else is coming up? Is there, what are you working on? Is there something else you're working on? Or is it all just about this film right now? Well, we are, we, you know, there are some very important things to um, still um, uh, pursue or, or, or get out of this film. But we're just at the beginning stage now of, of, of a start is a very strong word. I don't know if we're, actually started yet but um um about 30 years ago at the height of the um aids epidemic i was teaching in rikers island uh which is uh, the law was up until very recently the largest inmate facility in the united states it housed 19,000 inmates and uh, was on an island right off of, uh, you know, Manhattan. And um, and at first I was teaching a facility that housed the most dangerous inmates in New York City. And then when I had been teaching there for a while, the people who uh, placed me in the in Rikers asked me if I would be willing to go to, they had just opened a new facility that housed inmates with full-blown AIDS. And none of the other teachers were willing to go because, you know, this was, was at the time when everybody was afraid. And um, so I said I would go. I don't know why I said that. I, but I did, and um, and I was there for about a year, and I saw many, many things, to say the least. And um, about probably about a year after I left there, I wrote a script, a uh, screenplay. So it was like in the early '90s, and I totally forgot about it. You know, because it's uh, what is it now? It's two thousand, you know, thirty years later, and uh, fortunately, Kristen reminded me, and uh, it took about a month to locate it, and um, we just located several versions of it, and um, we think, unfortunately, now more than then was is a better time because. I don't think anybody would have had anything to do with that film back then. Um, I think it's a very interesting time to to um, address that history subject, whatever. That that sounds incredibly interesting, and yeah, just what you described to me. Um, when the course of Straight Up and Fly Ride has kind of done its thing, I would love to see and find out if you guys are kind of hunkering down and starting to work on this project. Yes. It's hard, you know, it's, I, I have to admit, you know, when you make a movie like this, 
you know, it's very hard. I don't know. I don't think I'm speaking out of turn for Kristen, definitely not for myself. You know, it's hard to think of other subjects to, um, you know, it's uh, to make a movie about because, you know, it's, you know, you, you want to continue making films that are, you know, original and specific and yet universal and, and then, you know, so, you know, we hope that we can continue this and that that's why, you know, we're very keen on making this movie. You know, it's not like the good news is I don't think we have to worry about too many other people making this film, you know, right now. I don't know. I, I think I'm one of the few people who lost who had this experience. So, um, yeah. And it's a good thing that it was committed to paper back then because my brain is, you know, uh, a big bowl of scrambled, you know, alphabet soup. <laughs> and so who knows what I would remember now. So, you know, I feel very fortunate to have that reference. You know, it's like a surprise. You know, it's like the surprise in the Cracker Jacks box. Yeah, no, it's, it's amazing that you that you found that again and those, those different versions of it. And yeah. that, um, like you just said, it's something from personal experience. So you can yes. make sure it's, you can make sure it's done right. Um, right. It's not going to be something just diluted by someone else's input, vision, what have you. No, no. This is this is also I don't think a subject. You know, very very many other people can give their expert opinion to. Yeah. You know, especially yeah. since even some of the particulars are historical. And if you weren't there then, you know, shut up, basically. Yeah, no, I, I, and especially since we're you know, speaking about teaching and that type of thing, um, I remember my first day of teaching in a public school. And yeah, right. you go to college and they tell you the stuff and you do student teaching and your practicum and all that. And then and there's like, so many things, yeah, there's so many things they can't teach you until you just actually do it. And you're like, well, I didn't know this was going to happen. Now what do I do? Yeah. Uh, better figure it out. <laughs> yeah. Um, yes, there were many experiences like that in Rikers Island. The difference is, like, you know, I also taught in public school. You know, you have those experiences in public school, you know, oh, I didn't expect this. But the things you didn't expect at Rikers Island are really things you didn't expect. Not, not necessarily that they're, you know, dangerous per se, but they're just things like, holy crap, I, you know, like, what, where's the, you know, the uh, guidebook for this? You know, uh, who, who, you know, they don't, they don't like say, oh yeah, just remember, you know. That this can happen. Yeah, no, it's gotta and, be really you know, they also don't give you any preparation for going there. I had an interview when I got home. I got a voicemail message on my in, you know on my message machine, which for all you kids out there, it <laughs> doesn't exist right now. Um, and it said, you know, you start tomorrow. So not only didn't they tell me anything, I didn't figure out how to get there. And, you know, even though I'm like 20, 30 minutes away, you know, Manhattan, um, you know, there's a specific bus and a thing and they don't tell you anything. You know, and there's a, um, you're riding a bus that's composed of former and future inmates <laughs> and you. <laughs> and no supervision. <laughs> so good luck. And the bus driver is not going to jump in at any point <laughs> to like help you out. <laughs> so, you know, education for sure. This needs to be made. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know, I'm, I'm thanking you for asking the question because every time I tell this now, I remember something else, you know, as telling you this, oh, I'm like, 
things are pinging in my brain. I go, oh yeah, I remember that. Stuff I hadn't thought of in like 30 or 40 years. Yeah, well, and again, that, it's, that sounds like such a unique experience that, um, like you were saying earlier, no one's going to come and make this and get even close to making it right because it's like, uh -uh. yeah, um, but goodness. But, um, well, Stephen and Kristen, who's here, I want to thank you so much for taking the time. Uh, again, for people, we had some audio issues, so I'm going to try to schedule something with Kristen uh, down the road here and see if we can get her back and get her connected so we can kind of um, kind of book in these, these interviews and hear some things uh, from her as well. Um, and I'll be the spirit in the background. There we go. <laughs> you can change roles. <laughs> Um, but um, I, I genuinely I loved, loved your film, your film and I wish you every yeah, success, success with it. With it. And, thank um, you very much. Yeah, thank you so yeah, much for taking the time. I, I so appreciate it today. Thank you. All right. Thank you, everybody. Thank you, everybody. See, you later. See you later. Bye bye. Happy Labor Day. Happy Labor Day. Happy Labor Day. <laughs>